Hi everybody, this is Susie, and welcome to a Vintage Design Studio. I'm going to show you something really cute to make today. A little bit, uh, a little bit ago, I had made um, a file folder that was very vintage looking, very beautiful. And um, along with that was a clothespin holder. And I call it a clothespin holder because this is what you use to hang your clothes on the line. And I wanted to show you how I designed that. Um, if you can see clearly, and I don't want to get too close, um, this would be coming in raw wood when you would buy it. Okay, it's very inexpensive. You can actually, I got a package of 30 of these, okay, and I believe it was like 3 or $4, I'm not really sure. You may also be able to buy them in uh, small packages at Twins Moms. Um, I do believe that that may be coming soon to her shop. Um, and just to uh, share with you how to make some of these on your own, which are great holders for your ribbon storage. They're really cute to add on top of um, a really, uh, if you're going to, do a package gift for somebody and you want to put that on there, maybe a bridal shower a gift or something of that nature. You just use your imagination, that's what I do. <laughs> anyway, these are the things that you're going to need to um, have to make this project. You're going to need, naturally, um, a raw clothespin. You're going to need your choice of stamp and my choice of stamp is a script stamp from Stampers Anonymous, the Tim Holtz collection. Okay, I love this stamp. I use it all the time. And uh, these do come on wood blocks. Um, I don't know if this one in particular does, but you can get any script block. Uh, and you don't have to use script, but I particularly like it because it does give anything a vintage feel for a background. You're going to need the... Um, archival ink in black. You can use it in brown, uh, then you would need to change up your background color, but I prefer the jet black. You are going to need one of these um, inks, essentials, uh, Tim Holtz uh, sponge pads. Uh, my handle broke off, but you can still use it. In fact, I like it without the handle. You're going to need um, the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink in Vintage Photo. Let me just move my camera up a little here. In Vintage Photo or in the tea dye, we can do both. Um, I might wind up doing the Vintage Photo today, we'll see. And uh, if you noticed, I have my labels on here and that's how I store them in my little tin box that I have. <clears throat> and lastly, you're going to need a piece of vintage seam binding. It, I call it vintage, but it's seam binding for those of you who are interested in purchasing seam binding and don't have any or never tried it, you can go to wildorchocrafts.com. They have an array of beautiful colors there and you can uh, wrinkle up your own and let it look vintagey and let's get started. Okay. I'm going to get my stamp, and the reason why I like using um, a stamp on a glass block is because it's so much easier to um, to stamp your image. Okay, but the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to color this. So, we'll, again, I'm going to say let's get started. Okay. So, for those of you who are really not that familiar in this, I'm just going to show you how I do it. You're going to rub this in, and you're going to get your clothespin, and you're just going to put the, apply the color onto the wood, however light or dark you want it. Now, don't forget my style is vintage, and I like things to look like they're worn. I just love it that way. And you can do it any way you want. You can change this color up to be a pink color, or purple, or blue, or yellow. Um, you can make a variety of them. And um, they can be a gift for somebody, perhaps an, another crafting friend who needs help in storing some of her ribbons or laces. I have a big box full of ribbon. 
I don't even use it, but I ha didn't have any room to store it and uh, a while ago. And I have these, a bunch of these, and they're all plain. They're not even um, distressed or anything. But if you want to give someone a gift, this is really cute, even if you have to go to like a bridal shower and you're giving someone a first time gift, you can use these too. They look really nice distressed. Okay, I'm not going to make these too dark, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. And you'll notice that when you're doing this in the crevices, it'll kind of look like it's marbleized because you have these, you have the different shaped wood that's, that's, um, it's going to turn color like that. So it's kind of cool the way that looks. But if you want the bottom part to, to match it, to be a little darker, you can. I'm just going to do that for you so that you can see how it looks if it's a little darker. And I really love it dark. Okay. Okay. Now we have our... Um, a script stamp here on the on the acrylic block. You're just going to take, and I like stamping my stamps like this, and especially in this case because I know I'm going to be stamping the whole entire block. So take your stamp and and leave it on the acrylic block and leave it flat on the desk, and gently tap your archival ink on it. If you press down the archival ink, unless it's a really really old um, ink pad. If you press down on a new one, you will have a huge blotch of black ink. Believe me, trial and error, it's happened to me. Okay. Now, I also like this ink because it stays wet longer on your ink pad, which gives you time to get prepared. So here we go. You're going to start at one end, press down, and you're going to roll it which is going to give you an even stamp. Now you're not going to roll all the way around over and over because then you'll go over your script. So you're going to roll a little less than halfway around and then also you'll roll on the top so that you'll have some form of script generally um, and I'm hoping that you can you can see that. Doesn't that look so cool guys? I just love the way that looks. Okay, so we're going to step back on that, and I'm going to see if I can zoom up on this just to show you. Isn't that so pretty? I just love it. And, you know, you're going to have to forgive me, but I was showing you this, and I wound up smearing some of it, but you can get a general idea. And what I'm going to do, just for the sake of this video, <clears throat> I'm going to stamp this again. Let me just go back. And what I'm going to do is, okay, because I really want you to see how the script looks. All right, I'm going to do it on one that is not um, is not distressed, so that you can get an idea. And I have ink on my fingers. Okay, and you're going to just roll. Now see what happens when you roll it. How nice that script looks. Very vintage. There it is. And I'm just going to wait a little bit and then I can, um, I can color that one. And there might be a little bit extra ink on there. That's okay because um, when you do distress it, you're really not going to see it that much. Okay. Um, I'm just going to really quick. I leave this stuff on my desk, you guys. I don't know if anybody's used the Purell, but I do. I have a big bottle of it. And sometimes I really need to quickly wash my hands of, um, of inks and whatever. And it doesn't take it all away, but it will clean my hands just a little bit. So just excuse my hands. Okay. See? Ta-da! Okay, now I'm going to get the one that we just did. And I'm going to uh, use a piece of this seam binding here. Just going to cut a piece of that off. And there are some of you that are still questioning how to 
make your seam binding look a little bit wrinkled and you just simply wet it and dry it with your heat dryer and scrunch it while you're doing that. It looks very vintage and wrinkled. I'm not going to do that in this video because I have a tutorial on that out there already so you should check that out if you'd like to see that. And I know there, there are some talented crafters out there who have also done the same thing. And you see there you have a really, really cute... Um, this is something else that I had made. As, it's actually a second project. I'm going to stand it up there so that you can see. Actually taking the tripod off. Um, that's what I was telling you about the file folder that I made. And um, there were some people who were interested on how to make uh, the clothespin that went with that. And what I was using it for, sorry for the shaking, was I really liked the idea that I can put this clothespin that's already vintage and just, you know, stick that on there as kind of like a paper clip, if you would. So, anyway, I hope you like this tutorial. And just to end this off, I, I really, um, I'm not big on the tutorials, guys, but I'm just going to show you the tea dye really quick. Okay. The tea dye is much lighter because it has kind of like an orangey beige undertone uh, on top of the, the brown. And don't forget I'm using the same sponge, uh, which between the two sometimes I do that. I, I, I don't sit there and get really crazy about having everything separated. I like to experiment, so I don't care if I make a mistake <laughs> because sometimes those mistakes wind up becoming something that looks really nice like those flowers that I make that was a mistake and you see now the ink is dry on this and you've got this really cool you know as you're doing it you do it very slowly as you're rolling it so you don't go over what you've already rolled on there see and the more you The more you put ink on, the darker it gets. And it's just so cool that it's vintage. I totally love it. And just, you know, giving you another uh, feel of the how it would look with the tea dye and the, the pink seam binding. Very cute. See? I just love the way that looks. Oops, sorry. And just for those of you who um, would like to know, what if you roll your um, your stamp on the actual Ranger ink? Well, here's one. It's the faintest coloring. It, it still comes out as a very, very slight script. It's not that great. Uh, but I just left it alone. This was in my design team kit from... Esmeralda, she wrapped some ribbon around that, so I just distressed it. But you can see the difference in uh, in her um, clothespins compared to the dolly clothespins that I bought in the craft store. Hers, of course, I'm going to just move my tripod just to show you. But hers are, I like them much better, to be honest. But I couldn't find these anywhere. And so uh, when I was at the craft store last weekend, um, I wound up finding these. And for now, they work just as good. But I do believe that there will be sets of these um, that you can distress on your own at her store. I'm not quite sure, but we'll see. There's going to be some new things coming out shortly, so stay tuned. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I know I'm not the greatest at tutorials, but uh, if there's something that I need to clarify a little, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to do so. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.